الحمد للہ رب العالمین والعاقبۃ للمتقین والصلاۃ والسلام علیہ رسول الکریم اما بعد So welcome to our viewers. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Normally on our channel, we have Malana Usman and Malana Abdul Halim. And Alhamdulillah, to go through different things. Malana Abdul Halim focuses on the Shia aspect. And Malana, Abdul, uh, Malana Usman has been focusing on the Brilvi aspect. And our whole maqsad is to try to teach the people about what the truth is. And try to clear up any type of deviant beliefs. and try to keep the uh, the aqidah of the ahl sunnah um, as pure as possible now in the last few days we've been seeing um, things happening in speaker's corner quite worrying uh, individuals trying to cause problems individuals uh, making claims against islam um, and they've been doing it for years on end months on end they come weeks on end every week they come and they throw accusations against muslims they throw accusations against the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they try to demonize islam um they try to make islam look like something really really bad something that you know um, isn't really uh, true and then they make allegations against the quran and there's certain allegations that they make uh, and you know what we're all talking about about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his marriage to aisha allah and i don't need to repeat them um things brothers like uh, ali dawa alhamdulillah have answered these criticisms uh, they've given good jawabs given good answers to this and today inshallah the maqsad of what we're doing is we're going to be trying to uh, have a look at uh, some of the things um, that they say and looking at the reality of the situation um the church has had a big 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 and a massive problem with sexual abuse massive problem like absolutely massive problem we're going to go through some of the stories we're going to go through um, what the pope has done what the church has done have they done enough we're going to discuss have they done enough um is it too late is it too little too late um are the steps that they're taking are they good steps what does islam say about them steps Uh, that they're taking to try get rid of sexual abuse in the church um and why islam is different um you know how islam is different to christianity in this regard and why this problem isn't within the ulama but the problem is within the christian priests and we're going to be looking at these type of things so the first thing that i want to bring your attention to is some of the stories um about this <coughs> because first they may even deny you know that they have got a problem so let's look, have a look at what the news says Yeah, so you've got your story pedophile priest defrocked by the pope yeah paul moore who was convicted of sexually abusing three boys can no longer call himself father u.s bishop resigns amid abuse cover-up accusations bishop richard j malone uh i might pronounce some of these words wrong right so you can have to forgive me of new york states buffalo oversaw a scandal hit diocese yeah um pope lifts a pontifical secret rule over sex abuse Mexican church we're going to talk a little bit more about this um secret rule and um what's actually been happening and what the actual situation is at this moment in time then you've got here Mexican uh, church founder abused 60 minors yeah uh okay here we go French p- priest faces sex abuse accuses and god this is all this year by the way yeah 30th January work needed to repair trust in Catholic church top french clerk cleared of covering up abuse ex monk to be sentenced for historical child sex abuse and it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on okay so pope francis makes it mandatory for the clergy to report sex abuse so what's been happening is up to this point the church has been hiding decades and decades of abuse people have been going to court and they've been trying to hide it and now the pope has made it mandatory that they have to report the sex abuse now different types of sex abuse have been taking place um let's go through some of the stories the vatican under scrutiny it happens with the roman catholic church and its hierarchy each time a pedophile scandal is brought into the open it has happened over the past 14 years and of such magnitude that the united nations has questioned the church in 2014 the un committee on the rights of the child released a damning report on the holy see The Holy See has adopted policies and practices which have led to the continuation of the abuse by and the impunity of the perpetrators. Another matter was the code of silence that was imposed 
by the church on children and the fact that reporting to national law enforcement authorities has never been made compulsory. That is exactly what was revealed in 2002 when such a scandal broke in Boston. Right, so as you can see, they've been covering it up, they've been hiding it, and I think one of the stories that I came across actually was talking about this. Let's have a look. Right, so if you look at some of these stories here, yeah. Um, so you've got this pastor here who's expelled over abuse of power, sexually explicit texts, missionary child abuse long and spoken of, emerges from the shadows, exclusive exodus, uncovering sexual crimes and missing millions at a KZN cult, uh, and the Protestant church faces new sex abuse scandal as victims defy threats, censorship to speak out. Now listen to this. The UN Committee on Torture sharply questioned the Vatican this week over its handling of sexual abuse inside the Catholic Church. The hearing came just four months after another UN body, the Committee on the Rights of the Child, accused the Vatican of systematically turning a blind eye to decades of abuse and attempting to cover up sex crimes. During this week's hearing, Archbishop Silvano Tomasi revealed the Church had dismissed more than 800 priests for sexual abuse of children in the past decade. Where since 2004 to the end of 2015, 848 priests who were dismissed from the clerical status. 848. 848 people were dismissed. They weren't brought to justice, they were dismissed. Now imagine that what happened in the Haram with the ulama over there. The whole world would be jumping up and down and saying all sorts about us. And they just dismissed them, they didn't take them to court. It just speaks for itself. Na'uzu billah, na'uzu billah. Now if you listen to this story, this is so heartbreaking, yeah? So, so heartbreaking. All of the victims were brushed aside in every part of the state by church leaders who preferred to protect the abusers and their institutions above all. A thousand child victims, more than a thousand child victims. Oh, oh, oh. Priests were rape, raping little boys and girls, and the men of God who were responsible for them not only did nothing, they hid it all for decades. The grand jury concluded Giella's tragic children. The pattern was abuse, deny, and cover up. The effect not only victimized children, it served a legal purpose that church officials manipulated for their advantage. The longer they covered it up, the less chance law enforcement could prosecute these predators because the statute of limitations would run. As a direct consequence of the systematic cover up by senior church officials, Almost every instance of child sexual abuse we found is too old to be prosecuted. The grand jury urges lawmakers to create a civil window in Pennsylvania so that older victims may now sue for damages from when their bodies were defiled as children. Right, so if you remember, I think um, the Pope, it was after what happened in Pennsylvania, which is this case over here, that is now made it mandatory for the clergy to report sex abuse. Um, I think this is someone that we need to listen to here. So I How on earth do you compute the conduct of people who were ordained to serve, to serve a, a head of the church who said, allow little children to come to me and do not hinder them? I don't pretend to understand the mystery of evil that is caught up in this. If they were all mad or, or totally evil, it would be easy to understand. But how can this man or this woman, but usually a man, about whom there is so much that's so good, do something that's so evil? I don't understand that. How now, before you ask his next question, he said a few things here. He said he doesn't understand. It's not about understanding. It's about preventing it from happening in the first place. They, need, they needed to have put measures in place 
to protect these children, to protect other type of people as well from getting abused. Now, if you look at what Islam says in regards to this, you know, the first verse, كل المؤمنين يغضوا من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم وكل المؤمنات يغضون من أبصارهن ويحفظن فروجهن. These verses they talk about lowering your gaze and protecting your private parts. It all starts from the eyes. If you look at someone with lust, then these type of feelings they increase. They keep on increasing, and a person is not able to protect themselves, um, and then puts people in danger. So first and foremost. You know, looking at the teachings of Islam, Islam wants to prevent it happening from the roots. If you don't look towards these people, if you find, you know, there's these illnesses within a person, then the first thing that they need to do is they need to prevent themselves from being put in a situation where this is going to happen. So without looking at them, you know, protecting the person's private parts, protecting a person's private parts goes in you know you can go really deep into the meaning and you can look at you know um, things like for example pornography how this affects a person you can look at you know illicit relationships how that uh, affects a person and what is and then you look at what islam's attitude is well i don't even go uh, near or uh, you know close to zina or any type of you know sexual act so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to prevent it from happening so prevention is better than cure and at this moment in time, the church is searching for a cure uh, and they didn't try to prevent it. Uh, and now it's come to a stage where they've acknowledged that there is a problem and the Pope has apologized for it um, and they're trying to make an amends for it. But, you know, looking at the teachings, looking if you look at the difference between the two teachings um, and if you look at how in the haram, how people are protected, how the ulama uh, in the haram, alhamdulillah, may Allah continue to protect them. That's our capital. The Vatican is the capital of uh, the Christians. Um, and if you look at what, what the uh, Archbishop was saying, 848 people, 800 from 2004 to 2013, 848 people were dismissed. Imagine, like I said before, 848 ulama. If that was 848 ulama, Inna lillahi wa inna rajiun, you know, um, people, will be saying, people will be saying all sorts. Anyway, let's continue this. How difficult is it for the church to restore its moral authority given decades of scandal, of cover-up, and of the blighting of individual lives by priests? I think we just have to accept that our moral authority and our credibility in more general terms has been massively damaged. It's shot to pieces, isn't it? I accept that our credibility is shot to pieces. I mean, you wouldn't expect anything different after all this that we've been hearing. Oof. How will it be restored? over a very long period of time and with great tenacity, but also a great quality of focus, by which I mean focusing on the fact that no amount of spin in all the world is going to do the trick. The only thing that will restore our credibility is, is a radical conversion, here I use the language of faith, conversion to the gospel of Jesus Christ and becoming the kind of church he obviously wants us to be, in which we have failed to be, lamentably, in this area of child protection. Well, he has said some good things there. The fact that, you know, he's, he sees that there is a problem and he sees that, that the solution to it is to go back to the gospel of Jesus. So he wants to go back to those teachings that Jesus taught. Now, if you look at what Islam says, about the teachings of Jesus or Isa al Islam, <coughs> that they are in line with Islam. Um, and we're saying that the solution to most problems in life is Islam. Why should we have any hope that things are going to improve? As a believer, my answer is because of Easter. Certainly in this gathering, I sense in the Pope and in all the bishops who are there a real determination, whatever their cultural setting may be a real determination to understand what ha has happened, why it has happened, and to act together, not in isolation or in fragmentation, but to act together, I say in the power of the gospel, to, uh, 
to eliminate abuse from the church and to make sure there is a church which is, is transparent, accountable, inclusive, and the words that Pope Francis uses, uses a church which is a loving mother, which we have so patently failed to be. Mm. Only that speaks for itself. I mean, I don't really need to comment about that. So, I think in conclusion, what we're, what we're looking at here is, I mean, we can go really, really deep into it, but it's put me off loud. There's a lot of stuff that we've been uh, listening to and that we've been hearing about. Ultimately, 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 you know, blaming Muslims that, you know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did this, did that, saying that, you know, these, um, uh, they call them, what's it called, Muslim rape gangs in the UK, these type of things, it's an Islamic problem. It's not an Islamic problem. It's not an Islamic problem whatsoever because the people who are doing those things, they're not uh, shining examples of Muslims. They, I mean, they don't even go to the mosque. Um, they've got nothing to do with Islam in that regard. But these people who are doing these sexual abuse in the churches, these people are priests. These people are those people who are affiliated with the church, with Christianity. And as a result, as this Archbishop of Brisbane has said, the credibility is shut to pieces. Now, what can we learn from this? First of all, what we need to learn from this is that, you know, attacking other people, um, bringing cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and, you know, saying all sorts of stuff about Muslims and, um, you know, making us look like the boogeymen, um, as if we're some like predators or something, we're terrorists, we're this, we're that. First of all, you need to look within yourself. You need to look at what's happening within your own church. You need to look at what's happening around the world. And you need to deal with this situation. You need to get involved. If you, you know, they always say to, um, it's always said, why do um, Muslims uh, deal with these um, Asian rape gangs you now, grooming gangs? Um, why don't the mosque talk about it? Why don't, you know, in a Friday prayer, why don't they mention anything like this? Well, we'll say the same thing to you guys. That, you know, why do you come to the park? And why do you speak about this? Why do you talk about them thousands of people in Pennsylvania who got um, raped and who got abused? And why do you talk about all those different cases around the world that happen? Why do you talk about your own credibility? You know, why do you talk about those steps that you're going to take to ensure sexual abuse doesn't occur? You know, we've been really, really nice. We don't really highlight these issues. Um, we let the church deal with it but I think it's about time somebody came out somebody spoke about these issues and I would like to hear people from speakers corner the Christian people from the speakers corner that come out accept that there's a problem and then give give solutions towards these uh, horrific things that we're hearing um, it's in the news I mean it doesn't get as much coverage as you do when you hear you know when when you hear these Asian guys when they get called all their faces are plastered over all the news outlets and you don't hear as much uh, when it comes to these um, other people doing it. So there are issues out there. The Christian community, they need to highlight these issues. They need to give uh, solutions to these issues. And they need to show the world that, you know, they're on the path to uh, mending, you know, some of the damage that they've done. May Allah guide us, may Allah guide them. Uh, may Allah protect all of the innocent people around the world who are going through this abuse and you know those people who are doing the abuse may Allah deal with them in the way that he deems appropriate Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah